Welcome to Electron Online, and here we have another example of how to use impedances and the calculations that we learned how to do with a parallel branch system. Now, in this case, we're going to have three parallel branches, Z1, Z2, and Z3. And so we know that the total, or 1 over the total impedance, is equal to 1 over Z1 plus 1 over Z2 plus 1 over Z3. And these are the three impedances we're going to work with. So how do we do that? Again, we cannot just do a simple vector kind of addition where we take all the real parts and all the imaginary parts and add them together because they're not in series, they're in parallel. There's a different method of doing that. So let me go ahead and plug that into the equation over there and then we'll figure out how to solve a problem like this. All right, so this is equal to 1 over Z1 and Z1 is going to be 40 ohms with an angle of 60 degrees. And you know what, I'm going to leave the ohm symbol off because that just makes it a lot cleaner. So we'll just write 40 and an angle of 60 degrees plus 1 over, that's going to be 80 with an angle of 20 degrees plus 1 over, that's going to be 50 with an angle of minus 50 degrees. Now, to put things in perspective, whenever you have a positive angle, it probably has to do with a inductive type branch. So the inductive properties of these two branches are bigger than the capacitive uh, properties of those branches, therefore we have a positive angle. But the third branch right there definitely acts like a capacitive branch. We have more capacitors than inductance, and so we have a negative angle there, a negative uh, reactance angle. All right, the first thing we're going to do is move those to the top. And so 1 divided by 40, well, that's equal to 1 40th with a new phase angle of minus 60 degrees. <clears throat> so when we take the inverse, it's like dividing 1 by the denominator. You can think of the numerator as being a 0 degree angle. That would be a 0 degree angle and a 0 degree angle so that when you divide 1 divided by 40, you get 1 40th. And when you divide this angle by this angle, you simply subtract the angle. 0 minus 60 is minus 60 degrees. Same over here. That would be plus 1 over 80 and an angle would be minus 20 degrees because 0 minus 20 is minus 20 and here plus 1 50th times an angle of plus 50 in this case <clears throat> excuse me plus 50 in this case because it's 0 minus a minus 50 becomes a plus 50 so now we have this all in the numerator now we simply have to add these together well, we can't add them together in this format. We now have to convert them to the complex number format so we can add all the real parts and all the imaginary parts together. So we have a magnitude of 1 40th and an angle of 60 degrees. So how do we get the, the real and imaginary parts? Well, remember that the real part R is equal to the impedance, the magnitude of the impedance times the cosine of the angle theta. And to find the imaginary part x, you get the magnitude of z times the sine of theta. So what this then becomes, uh, this would be equal to, I'm going to give myself a little bit more room, so I'm going to write the equal sign over here. So it would be the amplitude 1 40th times the cosine of a minus 60 degrees. And that would be plus i times 1 40th, the magnitude, times the sine of minus 60 degrees. Oh, where did it go there? Minus 60 degrees. So that's the real and imaginary part of the first impedance, or at least for the inverse of the first impedance. So now we have plus 1 over 80 times the cosine of minus 20 degrees. That's the real part, plus i times 1 over 80 times the sine of 80 degrees, which would be the imaginary part of the inverse of the second impedance. And I'm out of room, so I'll just put it underneath. Uh, plus 1 50th times the cosine of 50 degrees plus the i, the imaginary part, would be 1 50th times the sine of 50 degrees. There we go. So now we have to calculate the real imaginary parts for the inverse of each of these three impedances. So let's do that. So we have 60 minus, take the cosine of that, that's uh, 0 0.5, it doesn't matter if it's plus or minus, times 140, so that's 0 0.5 divided by 40 equals, that would be 0 0.0125. And the sine of minus 60 degrees, hmm, that will give us a negative value, one at 60 minus, take the sine of that, that's a negative value. Uh, divide by 40 equals, and so it would be uh, minus the imaginary part. Oop, let me make sure I 
go underneath there. Okay, my Nash error part would be 0 0.0217. Okay, so I have the real imaginary part of the first one. Now let's go to the second one. So plus, take the cosine of 20, doesn't matter if it's minus, take the cosine of that and multiply it, oh, divide it by 80, and I get plus 0 0.0117. And there we're going to get um, something is wrong on this one. Why did I get an angle? This should have been an angle of minus 20 here, minus 20 degrees. That's better. Mm, just got an error. So we have a 20, make that minus, take the sine of that, and multiply the times or divide it by 80. And we get uh -huh, minus i times 0 0.0043. Okay, so now I have the real and imaginary part, the inverse of the second impedance. Now we do the third one. So we be plus the cosine of 50. 50, take the cosine, divided by 50 equals, and we have 0 0.0128 or 129. And then here we get the plus, take the sine of 50, sine of 50 times, or divided by 50 equals, and we get plus i times 0 0.0153. All right, so let me make it a little bit easier to see. Uh, okay, so we have the real parts. So this is the real part, there's the real part, and there's the real part, and we have some imaginary parts. So here's the imaginary part, the imaginary part, and the imaginary part of the inverse of the three impedances. So now all we have to do is add those together. Okay, let's get a calculator for that. There's my calculator. All right. Point zero one two five plus point zero one one seven plus point zero one two nine equals and we get zero point zero point zero three seven one. Of course that would be known, so we'll leave the ohms off for now. And now the plus or minus, let's find out plus or minus the imaginary part. So we get point zero 217, that's a minus, um, minus 0 0.0043, and then a plus 0 0.0153 equals, and it'll be minus i times 0 0.0107. So there's a real and imaginary part of 1 over z total. Remember, this is still 1 over z total. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert it back into this format right here. So we have magnitude and angle. So to do that, we have to take the uh, real and imaginary part, square them, add them together, take the square root, because remember that the magnitude is equal to the square root of the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared. So the real plus imaginary part. So we have 0 0.0371, we square that, plus 0 0.0107, we square that, equals, take the square root of that, and we end up with, this is equal to a magnitude of 0 0.0386. And the angle can be found by saying that the angle theta is equal to the arctangent of the imaginary part x over the real part r, which is equal to the arctangent of the imaginary part, which is one, uh, 0.0107 divided by r, which is uh, 0.0371. Now notice that this is going to be a negative angle, right? Because we have the imaginary part is down, so we're going to have negative angle. Might as well put negative there. So we have 0 0.0107 divided by 0 0.0371. Take the arctangent of that, and it's going to be negative 16.1 degrees. Negative 16.1 degrees, and so this becomes a minus 16.1 degree. But remember, this is 1 over z total, so if we want to find z total, we'll simply find the inverse of that, which means this becomes 1 over that number, and this becomes a positive instead of a negative. So therefore, we can conclude that z total is equal to the inverse of that number, so we take 0 0.0386, take the inverse of that, and we get 25.9. 25.9, of course that would be ohms, and the phase angle would be a positive 16.1 degree. And that's how you find the total or equivalent impedance when you have a parallel branch like that, and you do have to go through that process. Hopefully,
That made it clear. And now you're ready to start tackling these different kinds of circuits where we have parallel branches and impedances with both inductors, capacitors, and resistors, and where we have reactants and we have resistance, we have to combine them all together. So hopefully this will make it clear, and now we'll, go, we'll do some examples to fortify your understanding of how to do that.